Sing it again. To be like Jesus. To be like Jesus. All I ask is to be like Him. Jesus Christ. Amen. It's, it truly is a blessed honor and a privilege for us to be gathered here this evening. Amen. How many are happy to be here this evening? All right. We're going to start a song service now as we stand on our feet. Let's sing that song. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. Lifted up, it's oh, blessed be the name of the Lord, He is worthy to be praised and adored. So we lift our holy hands in one accord, singing, Blessed.
song he set me free he set me free once like a bird in prison I dwelt no freedom from my sorrow I felt then Jesus came and listened to me glory to God he said set me free he broke the bonds of prison for me I'm glory bound my Jesus to see glory to God he set me free now I am climbing higher each day darkness of night drifted away my feet are planted on higher ground glory to God I'm home bound oh he said be free yes he said be free he broke the bonds of Search me, O oh Lord. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart today. With our hands lifted up. There 
sing it again. Let's sing it again. Dear precious and heavenly Father, Lord, we come under your presence this evening. Lord, once again we surrender ourselves unto thee, O Lord Jesus. Lord, we yield our body, our spirit, and our mind, O Lord Jesus Christ. May you just take us, O Father Lord, into that heavenly realm, O Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I believe one day, O Lord Jesus, you took Peter, John, and James, O Father Lord. Lord, when they saw in that, what they saw in that mountain, on that Mount Figari, raging Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, they saw your experience, O oh Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, they said, O oh Father Lord, it is good for us, O oh Father Lord, if we can build a church there, O oh Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we say the same thing in this evening, O oh Father Lord. Lord, may you search our hearts, O oh Father Lord. Lord, may you hide us, O oh Father Lord, from this world, O oh Father Lord. We pray for the service, O oh Father Lord. May you take the pastor, O oh Father Lord, behind the cross, O oh Father Lord. May you hide him, O oh Father Lord. May you touch him with the coal of fire. Lord, we pray that tonight, O oh Father Lord, may your presence come down, O oh Lord Jesus Christ. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot do anything, O oh Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, may you help us, O oh Father Lord, to get out of the way, O oh Lord Jesus Christ, so that you can move, O oh Lord. Because without you, O oh Father Lord, moving, it won't do us any good, O oh Lord Jesus Christ. We pray, O oh Father Lord, that Lord, may you just take, O oh Father Lord, those words that are written, O oh Father Lord, in the Bible. May you make them alive in our hearts, O oh Father Lord. May you just come down in the form of the Holy Ghost, O oh Father Lord, and then f and fill each and every one, O oh Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, you know each and every one's need, O oh Father Lord. May, may you meet them, O oh Father Lord. Lord, we are the revelation of the seventh seal, O oh Father Lord. We are the revelation of the third pool, O oh Father Lord. We, Lord, you said in, in, the, in one of the spoken words, O oh Lord Jesus Christ, you said under the token you can claim anything, O oh Father Lord Jesus Lord, tonight we are claiming the Holy Ghost of oh Father Lord. May we be like Jacob of oh Father Lord. And may we wrestle with you, O oh Father Lord. May we say we won't leave you, O oh Father Lord, until you bless us, O oh Father Lord. Lord, we, we stand, O oh Father Lord, and say, try us. Search us and try us, O oh Father Lord. If you find any wicked in us, O oh Father Lord, may you take it out, O oh Father Lord, before we step into your presence, O oh Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we need you, O oh Father Lord. We cannot move without you, O oh Father Lord. Lord, what we need, we, we don't need, mo we need more than just a, a dead church, O oh Father Lord. We need a church that is alive, O oh Father Lord. We believe, O oh Father Lord, we are the temple, O oh Father Lord. May you help us, O oh Father Lord, this 
evening, O oh, Father Lord. May you renew our thoughts, O oh, Father Lord. May you mold us, O oh, Father Lord, in such a way, O oh, Father Lord, that we will say it was good to be in the house of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, we come to you once again, crying, O oh, Father Lord, begging, O oh, Father Lord. We say, come down, O oh, Father Lord. May you touch our heart, O oh, Father Lord. May you see us through, O oh, Father Lord Jesus Christ. May you lift us up, O oh, Father Lord. Lord, may you give us, may you anoint our ears, O oh, Father Lord, in a certain way, O oh, Father Lord, that will be able to catch what, you, what you're going to say to us, O oh, Father Lord, this evening. Lord, we pray that tonight, O oh, Father Lord, may you just pour down your Holy Ghost, O oh, Father Lord. Lord, we believe the one king once prayed, O oh, Father Lord, for the rain, O oh, Father Lord, and it rained, O oh, Father Lord. But Lord, what we need tonight is not a rain, O oh, Father Lord. We need the Holy Ghost, O oh, Father Lord, to reign in our hearts, O oh, Father Lord. May you touch us, O oh, Father Lord. May you move us, O oh, Father Lord. Lord, we want to stand in your presence, O oh, Father Lord. We just want, we don't want to stand in the premises, O oh, Father Lord. But Lord, we want to be in your promises, O oh, Lord Jesus Christ. May you help us, O oh, Father Lord, this evening, O oh, Father Lord. May you May you take us, O oh, Father Lord, into that heavenly experience, O oh, Father Lord. Lord, we need you as we surrender ourselves and our spirit, O oh, Father Lord, that the Holy Spirit may take full control, O oh, Father Lord, this evening. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Before we welcome Brother Gideon, let's sing that song, Sister. Um, I want to do thy will, O oh, Lord. Amen. I want to do thy will, O oh Lord. I want to do thy will, O oh Lord. and sisters, welcome you in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can be seated while we uh, just thank the Lord for this privilege that we have to be together like this. And um, as I think it's been circulated to you, we are going to have tonight the testimony of Brother Willie Retief, which we're happy to have with us. God bless you, Dad, for being with us. And uh, just before we do, I wanted to just take a small portion of Scripture and... Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, <clears throat> Paul is speaking here on the resurrection really as a doctrine in particular and the gospel that he has presented to the people. And I'd like to read from verse 1. He says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If you, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I have delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, that's Peter, right? Then of the twelve. After that, 
he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James, and of all the apostles, and last of all he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due season. And uh, I look at the scripture and many times have thought, what a privilege it was for Paul to preach in that time. And he said, Christ has risen from the dead. But he didn't have to refer them to a history book. He didn't have to refer them to any kind of secular authorities. He said, he was seen of brethren of whom the most part were still alive at that time. So if you were just a young believer coming to hear Paul's ministry, and you didn't want, know so sure, did these things happen? You could just, just go along to Jerusalem, and you'd find one of those brothers that would be able to say to you, I am a witness I've seen. I was there when he appeared. Uh, you want to know if he rose? I can tell you, because I saw him. And so, for the message of this hour, we are privileged as an assembly, and I think you are privileged as young people tonight, to be able to hear and listen to what Brother Willie will say in a couple of minutes here, because he was not hearing it just by hearsay, but he's a personal witness, a testimony, an eyewitness of what God has done in this day. So we'd like to welcome you, Dad. Come sit up here with us. Amen. So we're just going to have a little chat about how things happened. Uh, I trust you're going to enjoy it and uh, just go through some of the things that have led us to where we are today, really, in the message of the hour. So uh, firstly, maybe just to say uh, you were there with Willie in 1951 and also in 1965, is that right? Mm -hmm. So I'd like to just uh, get the young people to sort of understand where we're coming from. Uh, 1951, that would make you 20 years old, young man, yeah. unmarried. <laughs> so uh, when we look at that, uh, how come, where were you at the time? How come you got to hear about the meeting in 1951? Well, I'd like to say good evening. Happy to be here. And we are not strangers, so we want to just have a nice talk. And uh, it was in 1951. I was not even in Pentecost then. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, come through the old Dutch Reformed Church style sort of things. And then we heard that Brother Branham was here in the country and great miracles took place. And I wanted to see it. I wanted to, not that I didn't believe it, but I wanted to see it. And then uh, when I went with some of the Pentecostal people to the AFM on a Sunday morning, and there was a young brother that I knew well, and he said, let's go and see Brother Branham in Bloemfontein. And uh, of course, you know where Bloemfontein is. There wasn't tar roads those days. And so after the service, we left, and we got there just a little bit late. Uh, we couldn't get seats, but the meeting didn't start yet, but, and I can just explain, you know, like on the platform was bright lights, and you could see everything, but over the audience it was quite dark. And so we stood in the back, and uh, they had a few speakers there that uh, spoke a few things, and Brother Bosworth was there, who spoke on faith a little bit, and then they start to <coughs> call the prayer line and start to sing Only Believe. And uh, when they start to sing Only Believe, it was just tremendous. The anointing that came down over that place was, you can't describe it. I just felt I was lifted up like this. And uh, they called Brother Branham and uh, yeah, that was something that I've never, never, ever experienced before, and only one time afterwards. And 
<clears throat> sometimes we think we are in the presence of God and we feel the anointing and so on, but it is not just like that. <clears throat> but uh, then as Brother Branham came up, he just did like you hear him on the tapes, if you listen to the tapes, good evening friends, and that's the way he spoke, and spoke a few words on faith as well, and prayer line, as you know, always comes from this side, <clears throat> and like I said, I wanted to see a miracle, because I hear of all these things that took place, and so uh, <clears throat> the first three people, that there was nothing that you could see uh, you know, in the natural, what happened to them. The sickness wasn't that kind. And so, uh, <clears throat> after the third person, he just stood up straight and looked up into the sky and uh, he said, just a minute, and everything went quiet. And so, after a while, he said, there's a man sitting over there, black uniform on, shiny buttons, and those days the police had black uniforms, shiny buttons, and so on. And right in line where we were standing in the back, this man got up. <clears throat> and I could see the light reflecting on those buttons. And he says, sir, you had cancer, but Jesus just healed you. Mm. And uh, I noticed Brother Branham didn't look down. And even if he looked down, he couldn't see what was going on there because it was too dark. And he turned this way. And he said, there's a woman sitting over on this side. He says, and he described her and said, you also had cancer and Jesus just healed you. He says, and the woman next to you, the same. She had cancer and Jesus healed her. And they stood up there. And Brother De Beer, I don't know if there's anybody here that knew him. Um, he was my pastor those days. Uh, anyway, he, uh, he knew those women. And uh, he said, that's true, they had cancer and the Lord healed them and so on. So that was enough for me. I realized when Brother Branham didn't look down <clears throat> to see where the people was that he saw a vision. And, and uh, that was enough. I, I believe with all my heart, you know, he was the prophet because, you know, I mean, we had no teaching on those things in those days. It was 1951. It was before the message even came here. And then afterwards, you know, we inquired all the time, where's Brother Branham? Why doesn't he come back? And what happened? Oh, he's a, he's a prophet, but he went off the word. <clears throat> That's the answers that you used to get. And that was it, you know. I could not believe that, you know, God could use the man like this. And under that anointing, <clears throat> and then he's false. It's just not what went down with me. Amen. Yeah. So in between there, you heard nothing more of Brother Branham until 1965. Yeah, it was for years and years that <clears throat> we inquired and nobody could actually give us any uh, idea of what happened. And then uh, I can just put in a little bit here. <clears throat> we went to, we had a, a minister that came and ministered for us in Brother De Beer's church. Uh, from the Pentecostal Protestant Church, and we were talking to him, and he said uh, uh, they were praying. He was pastor in, in Durban, and they were praying for 13 months, fasting, praying that God would send a revival to Durban. And uh, he says, <clears throat> well, they fasted, prayed, and we didn't know at that time that he had tapes of Brother Branham because at that time we didn't know anything about the message yet. <clears throat> and so he said that was the only place that God sent Brother Branham to. He says, go to Durban. See, after they prayed that God must send a revival to Durban. And he said he sent the best man that he had down to Durban to go and pre uh, preach there. So, <clears throat> yeah, then what is the now next Maybe thing? you want to just then just, you were in the Pentecostal church now in 1965, right? Yeah. So, but you had left the church. Yeah. And 
left the church, no message. Yeah, we, uh, we, you know, we look at the things in the church and we saw there was lots of things that's not scriptural and there's lots of politics in the church and we felt very upset about it and a few of us decided to leave the church <coughs> and uh, we started a little assembly here in Primrose, in, just in the shop. And uh, to our surprise, when we started there the first night, the place was full of people. And uh, we didn't even have uh, chairs and anything like it. But nevertheless, we went on there for just a short while. And I said to the brothers, I said, listen, if we preach what Pentecost preach, we might as well go back there. God must give us something different to this, what we had. Mm. And... Uh, just after that, uh, we got the first tapes, and <clears throat> there was a man that had about six tapes of Brother Branham that we knew at that time, and so we borrowed the tapes, and the first tape that I heard was uh, handwriting on the wall. <laughs> and uh, when I heard that tape, I said, this is the word of God. The people must hear this. And uh, <clears throat> of course, we uh, start to advertise. We had a little pamphlet that we send out every month, uh, Living Waters. And we start to advertise Brother Branham's tapes. We didn't have one tape yet. And uh, we will send them the tapes free of charge. And uh, <laughs> that was just a little act of faith, Brother Corey. <laughs> anyway, the, uh, mm -hmm. and then, uh, <clears throat> you know, with all that was going on, uh, I went to town, and just to tell you the simplicity of this thing, how it started, and I went to a place called Wild and Mar, eh? and I bought six tapes, five inch tapes, 600 foot, and uh, I thought this is the greatest thing that could happen. Now we're going to tape those tapes onto this and start to send it out. And you may, you may laugh, but that's the way it started. That's just exactly the truth. And so I asked the man that had the six tapes, can we borrow the tapes so that we can tape it? He says, no. And <laughs> you must know. He says, I'll tape it for you, and then uh, you pay me for it. And that was not in my heart. I didn't want to have any money involved in this thing and whatsoever. And yeah. But we were forced to give him the tapes, so he taped it, and it was so bad we couldn't hear what was going on in the, on the tapes. And, and then he charged us 50 cents. Those days was quite a bit of money for each tape that he taped. And then he put his name and address in the boxes. And I said, no, this is the end. We must find some other way. And so, of course, we had no equipment. We just started out. I mean, we had no typewriters, we had, we had no uh, piano to start, you know, in the services and uh, all that kind of thing. And uh, I won't tell you the story about the pianos. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> we went into town one day, my wife and myself, uh, to buy a piano for the church. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I'll tell half the story, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and so what happened was we walked from place to place to place and we came to Kahn's Pianos in Johannesburg. And so I walked in and I said to the man, we're looking for a second-hand piano for the church. And so he gave me an answer that was very abrupt. It was terrible. I just turned around, started to walk out, and he called me back and says, no, come back. And my wife stood there and she says, come back. He wants to talk to me. He says, I'll give you a piano, brand new piano, at the show price. That was in June. The show was those days in April, around about Easter time, right? And uh, he says, <clears throat> the show price was 500 rands. Can you imagine? What do you pay for a piano today? <laughs> 500 rand. <clears throat> and so uh, I said, but I haven't got cash. I can pay you over, a, you know, six months. He says, I'll give you 10 months without any interest. 
He says, why don't you take one for your house too? So I walked out there with two new pianos that day, <laughs> just to give you an idea. But <clears throat> then we had to have equipment to, to uh, duplicate the tapes. And of course, it's these big tapes, you know, these real tapes. Yeah. And it, it took some to, to do that because the tapes were seven inch, some was smaller, six inch and what have you. And, and four tracks, two tracks, and different speeds, three and three quarters, seven and a half, all those things. And, and so my poor wife, she had to do the duplicating in the daytime while we work and so forth. And at one time we had 16 of these tape recorders linked up one to the other yeah. to duplicate the tapes. And, uh, and the people gives orders, I want these messages, I want it this speed, I want it on this kind of thing, and this and this and this and this, and you've got to really know what you are doing to have eight of those things constantly running. But anyhow, the Lord helped us through that <clears throat> until the cassettes came in. The cassettes was a flop in the beginning, but uh, they became better and better and better. And today you can have it on a little thing like this, all the messages within a few seconds. Those days it took long hours, almost yeah. day and night, to do those things. Sure. <clears throat> and of course, uh, if I can just say, we have sent, even the cassettes, after the cassettes came out, we have sent hundreds of thousands of cassettes out in the country and overseas, different places. Yeah. So, back in 1965, and we, um, you got those tapes, the first one you listened to, but at that time you weren't baptized yet. Uh, we were baptized the 22nd of May, 1965. And how did that happen that you got to hear about well, the baptism? Well, we, Brother Jackson, you'll see him tonight also, and uh, he went overseas, and we heard that <clears throat> he had a different baptism. Of course, we were baptized in Trinity doctrine and all that kind of thing, you know? And uh, so when he came back, <clears throat> he used to live in the Cape, and we invited him to come up here to our little assembly over here. And we uh, said, now what are we going to do if he starts to preach this other doctrine about the baptism to us? What are we going to do? We said, okay, let him do it. Because we love Brother Jackson. He was a nice man and we knew him. If he says anything wrong, we can just correct it afterwards, you know. And uh, here we sit on the edge of our seats listening to the brother preaching and he preached about the faith of Abraham <laughs> I'll never forget that all about Abraham not a word about the baptism and afterwards I thought what a disappointment <laughs> <laughs> and uh, nevertheless we went home the other guy that was with us he invited brother Jackson to go and have tea with him and the next day at night I was in my office still where I used to work about 8 o'clock and hey, I couldn't bear it any longer. I must hear what Brother Jackson has got to say. So I phoned him up and he says to me, it's strange. Everybody went out tonight. They wanted me to go with. He says, I felt to stay home. I said, well, that's good. I want to talk to you about this baptism. What is this new baptism that you got? And... Uh, <clears throat> He says, have you got your Bible there? I said, no, I'm still at work. I said, uh, but just tell me what it is. Just give me the scriptures. And Brother Jackson tried to explain to me uh, Matthew 28, 19. And he battled a little bit. But while he was saying it, I just caught this thing. I said, no way how could I be so blind not to see it before? And before he could even go to the other, I said, Brother Jackson, I see it, Don't, no problem. He says, no, wait, 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 wait. And so he's on the other scriptures, and so 
Anyway, <clears throat> so eventually uh, he says, what are you going to do about it? I said, no, wait, I'm going home now. I'm going to talk to my wife, and if she sees it, we want to get baptized both together. And it was just like that. I got home, I told my wife, I said, look, we baptized wrong. This is the way, and she saw it. And that Saturday, <clears throat> we uh, got baptized. Here at the place, it's built like a ship. It belonged to a sister Leslie, <clears throat> and uh, we were baptized in a swimming pool there. And it was green as anything. It was <laughs> in the winter, of course, <laughs> you know. And uh, anyway, so uh, uh, I was also baptized in winter, but it was here at Boxburg on a lake somewhere, <laughs> and it was freezing cold. <laughs> Nevertheless, uh, yeah, they had to hold a stick that we can hold on to because the thing was so slippery and they never cleaned this thing. So <clears throat> afterwards, uh, well, I won't tell the rest of that story. That's very personal <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. So then it's shortly after that that Brother Branham came back. Well, just a week after that. He was in the country <clears throat> in 65. And of course, we were not allowed to go and see him in the hotel because of politics and country and this, that, the other thing. And from the churches, there was actually some people from the Apostolic Faith Mission that wouldn't like him to come back and preach. And, uh, but the next day we had a, a welcome for him at that same place where we got baptized. That ship building was like a hall. And so uh, that's where I took that little tape, Last Visit to South Africa. You've heard that. Yeah, we've got that. Actually, we're going to play it if we can. It can. They've got the video of it, and then we've also got the sound. So the sound is not synchronized with yeah. the video, because in those days, the video, let me just explain to you, you wound up this thing, and then it went grrrr, and you wind up again. So the tempo wasn't always perfect, so it's very difficult to match the Where sound to it, and had no sound on the video. So, but separately, Brother Willie actually recorded the video and the mm. sound clip, which is now labeled as uh, 1965 05 27, uh, last Brother Ranham's last visit to South Africa. So, Brother Edwin, if you can put that up for us, I'd appreciate that. No doubt, 
So, uh, yeah, I think that video clip showed quite a couple of things that we'll get to as well, but uh, obviously then that's the place where Brother Branham came, that he was welcomed and spoke a couple of words. Uh, for the audience, if you didn't follow that, you should have been listening with the Afrikaans ear on the one side. It's actually the one time that it's on tape the, where Brother Branham is being translated into Afrikaans <laughs> directly. But um, yeah, so then uh, at this welcome, uh, that's the time where you wanted to get Brother Branham to sign your Bible. Yeah, he was inside. Well, first of all, he was outside where you've seen there on the video where they put the flowers around him and he gave that little speech and so on. And then afterwards they went inside this hall, which was, uh, it was quite a building and he was sitting right in the back. And uh, I went back to the car and I got my Bible and I wanted him to sign my Bible. And when I got to the door, that sister that owned the place stood there and said, I can't go in. Uh, I mustn't disturb Brother Branham. He's tired. He came late last night and all this, that, the other thing. And while I was still talking to her, Brother Branham stood up in the back there and he says, Sister, sister, don't do that. Let the brother come in. And so I went inside and uh, he took my Bible, <clears throat> put it down there, and he started to tell me about what happened in Mexico when he prayed for those people for seven days in a row and uh, how that young girl that was blind, you know the story about that, how she wanted to get to him and of course he says if you would, uh, if the people would know that he was going they would have trampled him to death be, but you see the police was all around and but he says bring the girl to me and of course she screamed out when she saw and so on but uh, was, uh, they took Brother Branham away then. And that was the time he also measured his shoe to see if it was f fitting that old man uh, foot that was barefoot that came up there and so forth. And he said he just sat next to the pulpit, you know, for all those time, you know, morning till night and, and only had a little bit of orange juice to drink sometimes and for eight days. He says, brother, he says, that's tiring. He says, to sign Bibles, that's not tiring. He says, I can do that all day long. And uh, after he told me the whole story, he just signed my Bible, and that's it. Yeah. Okay, what do you want to know the and then after that, they went on their hunting trip. Yeah, then they went on the hunting trip, so, and <coughs> uh, Sister De Beer phoned me early in the morning and said, oh, they're at the airport, can I go and fetch them? Because her husband was a pilot and he was out flying. And uh, I went and picked them up at the airport. <coughs> it was Brother Jackson, Brother Billy Paul, and Brother Branham. And I took my wife with, and so <coughs> we picked them up and I was taking them to Brother De Beer's house because at that time he was my pastor in Pentecost and so on and uh, so on the way Brother Branham was telling us what happened on the hunting trip and all that I won't tell the story now but <laughs> anyway he is very humoristic 
laughing and carrying on <coughs> and uh, then uh, all of a sudden he said to me, uh, do you preach, brother? I said, no, brother Branham, because we just now understood he was a prophet and I mean, who are we? <laughs> who am I to say I preach? And uh, I said to him, I said, brother, Branham, I said, I believe it takes a very special anointing to preach. <clears throat> he says, that's right, brother. He says, it's a special anointing to preach. He says, there's another anointing to pray for the sick. And uh, then my wife <clears throat> said, brother Branham, uh, I'm so sorry I cut my hair. She says, I did not know it was wrong, but uh, after listening to your tape, marriage and divorce, I found out what it is, and I will never cut my hair again. And he said, Sister, if that is in your heart, God looks at that as long hair. And so uh, <clears throat> he says, and I preach marriage and divorce so hard because there are too many people just following the miracles and not believing the message. And so we spoke on those things for quite a while, and then we got to the house because it's not far from the airport and then we were at the house and Brother Bram was sitting down <clears throat> and for about two and a half hours he spoke to us, the few people that were there. Uh, if I can just come in there for a second. You say he was sitting down. There's a little story about that. Yeah. Sister <laughs> Debia told us as well. <laughs> yeah, she, that morning, I mean, she had all these cushions and stuff sent into the dry cleaners and it wasn't back yet and so Brother Branham was just sitting on the edge of the thing just straight up. He was a very small man and so on and uh, he was talking, talking, talking and then he stopped in Genesis, right in Genesis, talking to us for two and a half hours and I can assure you, you cannot just budge in and say, Brother Branham, what about this, what about that? In any case, we didn't know much at that time. And uh, he was just telling us how the sword came in his hand, what it looked like, and how he looked at it in the sun like that, and how long it was, and how sharp it was, and everything in detail, how the angels came to him. Of course, we didn't know too much about that at that time. It's just a pity, but anyhow, it was ordained of God to be that way. And so, after he was finished, now you must know his visa was restricted. He couldn't attend any meetings, not even a prayer meeting, nothing. And he said, I feel led of God to pray for you people. So the few of us that was there, Brother Branham was sitting on a chair. Billy Paul was standing there. <clears throat> and we just walked up to him there. And he just prayed for us. And uh, when he prayed for me, <clears throat> he said, uh, he said, God, show him while coming from the airport in the car that he's called me to the ministry to minister in this message and so forth. And all of a sudden I realized that was the moment he asked me, do you preach, brother? So he saw it already there and God showed him and there it was and he prayed for the ministry and prayed for my wife told her certain things and <clears throat> the other people it was just maybe six or seven people there that he prayed for then afterwards I asked Brother Branham because then we were the few tapes that we had uh, maybe I should tell you the story first but anyhow let me carry on I asked Brother Branham what must we do we start to duplicate the tapes and then we found out there was a franchise on the tapes and the people say you can't duplicate the tapes. I said to him, Brother Branham, we have a problem. I said, especially in our country with the black people, I said they don't earn lots of money. I said they can't afford to pay for the tapes and to write to America and pay three and four dollars for a tape. I said, what must we do? And we advertised them free of charge. Tell me. And Brother Branham, he just stood straight up with his head back like this, 
and he looked you straight in the eyes. If you ever think of a funny feeling, that's a funny feeling. It looks like Brother Branham sees something way behind you, and you stand here, and he looks right through your life. And it took quite a few seconds before he answered, eh? And you stand there, and he says, you go ahead and tape them. He says, Billy, give Brother, <coughs> Brother Way's address, that man that fell dead in the service that was raised from the dead. He says, he will send you the tapes free of charge, and you go ahead and tape them. And he said, and Brother, make sure, he says, my book, the seven church ages should be off the press now. He says, make sure you get that book. That book is thus saith the Lord. And I stand by that. I believe everything in that book, <clears throat> if there's anything that you don't understand, it's because you don't understand it. But it's truth. It's absolutely the truth. And uh, then I asked Brother Branham another question. <clears throat> I said, uh, we just heard that A.A. A. Allen, I don't know if any of you know A.A. A. Allen, evangelist. Uh, we just heard he died, but he died an alcoholic. Is that true? And Brother Branham went and stood like this again, looked me straight in the eyes for a while. And I want you to really notice this. He says, <clears throat> I don't know about that, brother. But one thing I know, if I could preach like A.A. A. Allen, I call myself a preacher. He says in the messages, say good things about a man, not the bad things. Say the good things. And that's what he did, right? So then from there we went to the airport. Just before you go there, I okay. to just have you, the, when Sister De Beer called you that morning, oh, yeah, okay. it was a little bit of a surprise and her fridge was empty, I think. Yeah, when, when I got there, she said, brother, I've got no money and what am I going to give Brother Branham to eat? Have you got money? I had four rand in my pocket. Now, four rand in those days was a bit more than what you think today. Four rand she went and bought meat. Meat in those days was 75 cents a kilogram. <laughs> right? So, and she bought meat and she fed all of us. And I can assure you, Brother Branham enjoyed that meat thoroughly. That's true. And uh, God will bless her for that. And uh, then, of course, can I go so, on to the airport? Yeah, well... I just, uh, so basically, as far as we are now, we've seen you were there present when discernment was done, prayers, and also what he said about you and mom. Mm. All those things have come to pass exactly like that. Then from there, he was going to go back home, so you went back to the airport. Yeah, he wanted to stay actually longer, but. Billy Paul's uh, father-in-law passed away, and he wanted to get back, so they went. And so on the airport, there was another evangelist, I don't know if any of you know him, Rassi Rasmus, and he had some of his people there, what they call the Blow Rockies, the people that wear the blue dresses. There was quite a number of them, and Brother Branham admired them for their dresses, their long hair, and everything, right? And he was standing there and certain people talked to him and talked to him and I was standing about as far as my hand is from Brother Gideon from him and all of a sudden that presence came. I can assure you brothers if you ever felt that you will never doubt that prophet in all your life. That presence just came in that airport and everything just quieted down. And it's awesome. It's awesome. And I looked at Brother Branham's face and he looked up 
and I saw he was crying, tears running down. And he says, I've seen him so many times, but I so desire to be with him. And that, that presence, you can't describe. It's, it's just supernatural. It's, it's beyond what you can even think with your mind. What, what caused it? I don't know. It just, it quiets everybody around. Yes. That will come back anyway. Yeah, so then after that, basically they went... But that was the beginning then, yeah. really, of the message in South Africa. And you started with a distribution. You mentioned just now about the five or six, six tapes um, and the problems you had around that. Um, let me just quickly, for everybody's benefit, when we said tapes, uh, we're talking about this, if you've never seen one. Uh, that's the seventh seal, uh, one tape seventh seal. Uh, if you had it on uh, the five inch reel, you would have had to probably use the All other the side as well, because you used to run it through the machine one way, and then when it got through, you turn it around, and you play it through again, so that way you had two tracks, and if it was a four track machine, you could switch it between, I'll actually demonstrate this, can I quickly do that, maybe it's a good thing. Uh, while we got you here, a bit of education. <laughs> that so, uh, machine weighs about, I don't know, 30, 40 pounds. I, I had to carry it in here. <laughs> and here's still a tape of song, Andre Sisters. Okay. That was our music at the time. When I was your age, that was the best music around. Uh, was the Andre sisters. They were singing all the believers' songs and all those sort of things. So you see, you put it on there and you... Oh, I need to... Where did I put that? Here we go. You need a reel to catch this up on. And then you have to thread this through. And between these two rollers, the one we used to call a capstone, Brother Edwin, I think, was commenting about that, having to change the speeds. Now, on this machine, uh, they've got a nice little fancy, and by the way, Brother Willie was an Akai fan after trying Philips and Iowa and everything else that yeah. just gave trouble. Akai became the sought-after brand for doing the messages. There's a little thing here, Brother Edwin, you can maybe zoom so they can see on the screen. Uh, that's a capstone. Uh, you need one of these if you want to play three and three quarters. Uh, with that, you could get one and seven eighths inches per second, that is. Yeah. Uh, one and seven eighths was fast enough for sound of uh, voice. Uh, if you went to music, you could get away with three and three quarters, but seven and a half was the ideal. And then the professional guys in the studios used to run it at 15, 15. to 30 sometimes, but 15 was like the speed you'd go. So uh, let's see what happens. Uh, need some power. There we go. I'm going to just forward a bit so we get into it. And this one had the four tracks. So you could have stereo, which was for music, or else you'd go to track one and four. That's too fast. Still too fast. So that was seven and a half, three and three quarter. Now we take the little capstone off. I better put this off, else I can't get the capstone off. It's a lot easier to scroll down the menu and select seven seal play <laughs> off one of these little uh, devices, eh? Where you've got all 1,200 messages on one. Fellowship around the world, and we have all things in common. Uh, now we have a wonderful pastor, a real man of God. Amen. All 
right? So that's the playing speed. To duplicate it, we could go up to double the speed or we could go to seven and a half. Seven and a half if you yeah. went any faster to try and duplicate, you would find that it started whistling. So that you've got a bad copy. So when Brother Brand Willie Vill talks about copying the tapes in the beginning, that's the speed. <laughs> And we'd have eight sets of these running at the same time and just the sounds of the different messages. So when it got to the end, you hear, okay, that one stopped. You've got to turn it around and start doing the other side. So, yeah, that's when we talk about copying tapes and we manage to send them out like that with Brother Branham's picture on that. Yeah, when we first started, uh, the man that had the six tapes, uh, he was not favorable to us. He, uh, he says, we take his ministry out of his hands. And I told him, I said, brother, I said, the country is open. Go wherever you want to, do whatever you want. We will not stand in your way. And But he never got any further than what he was. And then we found out that uh, he got spoken word books and he wouldn't let anybody know the address or where he got it from. And uh, somehow <coughs> with us advertising Brother Branham's tapes, people start to write to us and say, we've got some of Brother Branham's tapes. If you want them, we can duplicate them for you and some send it just like that with the address and everything on so we could write to <coughs> Jeffersonville and you know got the address of Brother Borders and so on and ask you know for the books and so forth so they when they saw what we are doing Brother Borders actually took all the books that they had on the shelves that was printed and sent them here to us we got bags full of books of course, then this man was upset about that because we are taking his ministry out of his hands. But we just carried on with what the Lord laid on our hearts to do and to send out the message because we saw there was a real need for the truth in this country. And we thank God for that because <clears throat> it went from here and, you know, we sent lots of tapes to Zimbabwe, Malawi and these places that we could go into. Like I said, hundreds of thousands of tapes went out, and then we started to print the books. And uh, mm -hmm. the first message that we printed was communion. And uh, that man started to print communion. <laughs> but he just put it on what we call Ronio, you know, roll it off on the machine. And, and on the back he put his creed, he says he believes in the baptism of the Holy Ghost by speaking in tongues. Of course, then we saw he's Pentecost, doesn't believe what the prophet says about these things and so forth. So, of course, he passed away long years ago already. So anyway, so the thing went on and, uh, you know, it was not without any problems, but there was lots of problems coming up because ministers withstood us, you know, from denominations and things, and, but any other Lord led us right through all these things by His grace. If we can just talk a little bit about the printing, um, we are talking yeah. also we started with the Ronio's <laughs> Gestetner machine. Um, I think my mom was the typist at the time, and uh, it's not an electric typewriter. It's one of those you hit, but the what they call the stencil, right? Yeah. That you used to put onto this Gestetner machine. Uh, it had layers, so you had to hit the key hard enough to hit through the first layer, so that the ink that mm. permeates from behind would come through, but only where it strikes through on the front sheet. So it had the backing sheet and the front sheet. And then you'd put this on this Gestetner machine. Uh, I remember when you started, you sort of ink it up and you turn it by hand uh, to get 
the ink going through and the first couple of sheets through and then I think it used to print about 500 sheets an hour mm -hmm. or something it's like started going and then would print those things you could get I think if you're lucky about a thousand copies of one stencil yeah and that was that then you had to retype it all again onto the stencil to get the next page done but then you progressed to light though maybe you <laughs> yeah <laughs> That was quite a thing. We we didn't have all the equipment, but we had a <coughs> small machine. Um, I can't remember what the name of the thing was, but nevertheless, there we have to type the things too on also like a piece of uh, stencil sort of a thing. And then we uh, never had all these things that they burn the plates, you know, they burn the plates, steel plates or whatever it was, or aluminium or whatever yeah they had like a photosensitive coating on it yeah and then we have to put it on this thing and run out in the sun and let the sun shine on it for a few seconds just not too much not too less and for that time and then you run in take it off and then it's developed and then you can put it on the machine and then you can do quite a few thousand with it. Yeah. And that was going a little bit faster in the old way and so forth, but it was still very, very slow. Yeah, I remember my dad, there was different chemicals you used to wipe those yeah. things with, and it's almost like it was a little dark room <laughs> you had to develop this plate. Yeah, it and was then a lot of things. Get it on. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's where the message started really with the printing and then after that progressed from this um, machine that we had here where we had so many together you got a duplicator I think in 1970 yeah then we got the duplicator that you can put uh, three of those tapes on and uh, actually from the master you can run three tapes onto this thing but shortly after that we they turned over to cassettes you know and then, of course, the cassettes wasn't too uh, good in the beginning. They used to stick and break and, you know, all kinds of things before it was running smooth and so forth. And then we start to get these uh, uh, duplicators that you can do it fast, you know, put one in and do six at a time. And that was going a little bit faster and so forth. But, uh, yeah, it was a long, long process. We did skip one, one medium in between here. Um, the first tapes that you could listen to in a car was obviously not these guys. No. <laughs> so this machine here is actually very unique. It actually has three, uh, you can put a cassette in here. Anybody seen a four track cassette, the little ones? You actually can put it in here. Where's the eject on this? Yeah, oh, yeah. I just opened, you put a cassette in there. But on the side, it has a slot for an eight track. An eight track was a tape that was yeah. a continuous loop. Sorry. A cartridge about that wide, by about that long, that you used to slot in there, or yeah. you could slot it in your car. And it used to take the tape from the inside mm. and feed it back on the outside. So it just kept running in a loop and you could record on eight different levels so that would give you about an hour so you can get about an hour's message on one of those that you can listen to in the car um, but you also had some vinyl records at one time that had brother Branham's voice on it yeah but those the records are about that big it's like a normal record but uh, they had to cut also some of the message off because it was too long for those things and I had a, I've still got a whole stack of that at home and you could use that <coughs> but uh, you used to get a tape recorder a small one and there was an Iowa one that you could play from the car <laughs> you put it on the back seat and with the thing from the cigarette lighter and there it goes and it could take a seven inch tape like that and uh, then Akai also made a very smart little machine a small one and you could 
get things to put on the sides that you can play the bigger tapes on and so on. I used to take that with me to Malawi and all those places where we used to go to and play it from the car. <coughs> but uh, it wasn't as easy as today, you know. I mean, we've got uh, all those messages on a little thing about that size, eh? Yeah, little 32 gig micro SD card. You got all the messages. You copy them, but what, five minutes on your computer, and you've done it all. That's, but this is how it all started. So, um, we thought you'd find that quite interesting to see how the message started, mm. and then from the little shop there, you eventually you moved to the mine hall. Yeah, we, uh, when we do the, did the printing, for instance, we stayed in Birchley, and we had a single garage with a, uh, with a, carport on the side where the car was and the garage we turned into the printing shop and uh, brothers used to come and help there and we used to print and then go into the house and put the books together you know all the things collating and then you know staple them and cut them and get them ready for the post because at that time we used to send the books and things all over the country all over South Africa, to all the little assemblies that we knew at that time and so forth. And we used to print for all of them. And uh, it was quite a, a job. We used to work till late at night sometimes on those things. And by the way, when we got into the message, there was, uh, there was nobody to go to and say, hey, what about this? What about this? The prophet says this, what about this? We had to go into the message uh, shelves and like you have a tape recorder like this with a tape on and uh, you couldn't go to your computer and say hey I want to see what he says about this and just type it in and there you got the answer. Then we put little pieces of paper where Brother Brenham talks about a certain thing in there and then uh, by tonight <coughs> all the brothers come together and uh, we start to discuss these things. He says this here, he says this, and we roll the tapes and roll the tapes. And sometimes five o'clock in the morning, we pack up, go and have a shower, and go to work. And uh, it wasn't so easy, like today you can have everything at your fingertips and so forth, it was difficult. Mm. But it was good. We. Uh, we had to study those things. Brother Jackson was in the Cape. He came with the baptism. And for years, that's all that he preached was the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. And we saw there was other things. And, you know, we went into marriage and divorce and things like that. And all those questions comes up. And so we had to study it all by ourselves to find out what it's all about. And the Godhead and so forth. There's very few people, and even today, there's lots of people that does not understand the Godhead. And so we had to study all those things and go into the tapes and study them. There was not all those uh, books that you have today that you can go to this one, that one, that one, that one, and just, you know, get all the information together. So it was quite difficult to get all the things together, and you have to make sure what you know is the truth. And... Uh, get all the places where he speaks about it and that's to say what the tape says <laughs> amen yeah and even the first concordances i think brother perry green yeah they was printed only around two concordances but that thick books white books like you know that wide that and that was taking some of the things and so forth and then brother marmalus came up and he printed uh, some concordances and so on where you can go into certain things and get it out of the messages. But it was just about, you know, halfway, you can say, into the message um, with all the things that they could get to. And then afterwards, of course, you know, they put these things in the computers and they get all the things at your fingertips, which is, I think it's just the grace of God. And we should make use of it while we can, uh, like we just spoke in the car, there's 
in the Ukraine. We prayed last night or Wednesday night for the brother there. We met him over there. They went in there now with the war that's there and they took everything. They, they printed the books there they, and did all the things there in that assembly and they've taken all their stuff. There was 150 people, I think, in the assembly. Now there's about 50 left, but they've mm -hmm. taken everything that they used there. Yeah. yeah, so the message certainly progressed and has become quite a force to reckon with in this hour. Yeah, I mean, spread you know, around and, uh, from humble beginnings very humble beginnings and it's yeah we had to go to different places like you know Zimbabwe Malawi and even in this country we had to go to different uh, cities and so on you know to help the people in the beginning and where there was only a few people we used to start the assemblies there and and help them along so uh, today they're all independent thank God for that and do their own things whatever they want to do Well, thank you very much. We appreciate that. And okay. It's a privilege to be able to hear these things. And no, you know, it's not just something you know about somewhere that you read, but there was Brother Willie right there present, saw these things, part of it, part of the start of the ministry in this country, and uh, just thank the Lord for what he's done. Amen. God bless you. I think we can stand and sing that little chorus. Blessed are your eyes, for they see the things of God. That was spoken by the prophet in our day, and then I'm going to ask Brother Teresa can come and just sing one or two more choruses and close up for us. Amen. Blessed are your eyes, for they see the things of God that were spoken by the prophet in our day. They were hidden from the wise and revealed to those who look. I'm so glad he touched my eyes that I might see. Blessed are your eyes, for they see the things of God that were spoken by the prophet in our day. They were hidden from the wise and revealed to those who learn. I'm so glad he touched my eyes that I might see. Blessed are your eyes, for they see the things of God that were spoken by the prophet in our day. They were hidden from Sing it again. Oh, blessed are your eyes, for the seen the things of God that were spoken by the prophet in our day. They were hidden from the wise and revealed to those who learn. I'm so glad he touched my eyes that I might see. Let's sing that song. The sweet by and by, the sweet by and by. There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there. Sing on that beautiful shore The melodious songs of the blessed And our spirits 
chanson Oh no more Not a sign for a blessing of rest In the sweet by and by We shall need all that beautiful shore In the sweet Sings that hallow our days in the sweet by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore. Sing that song, thanks, thanks, I give you thanks. Oh, thanks, thanks, I give you thanks for all you've done. I am so blessed, my soul has found. Lifted up and sing thanks, sing oh thanks, oh thanks. I give you thanks for all you've done. I am so blessed, my soul has found rest. Oh. Sing it again. Frank Mokuta, if you can please come and close the service in a word of prayer, brother. All right. Dear God, we thank and praise you, Lord, for a marvelous time we spend in your presence, God. As we read this testimony, Father God, it goes straight to our hearts, Lord, and our desire is to make a personal contact with you, Lord like a brother did, O oh Father God, Lord. And it's to your heart, O oh Lord, to see what you've got available to us, O oh Lord, and what we're doing with it, O oh God. Put in us this desire, O oh God, and give us a heart to serve you, God, as we see the hour dawning, O oh God, and the time getting to an end, Father Almighty. May you bless each and every one today, Father. And as we go out of this place, O oh God, may you give us that heart, O oh God, May you give us a God that's desire to serve you, Lord. May you give us this heart to speak to our friends at school, at work, O oh Lord God, and really spread this message, O oh God. We've got the opportunity, God. We've got the testimony, Father. And may you come and flood with your spirit, O oh God. Give us courage, O oh God. Give us wing to fly, O oh God, Lord. Give us a desire to serve you, Father God. Bless, O oh God, Lord, each and every one. And be with us as we leave this place. And bring us back together on Sunday again and, and as we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.